special session today to determine... In a sense, we were lost. We didn't know what the limits of communication were. And so we couldn't know how far we could go in connecting people, computers, systems, devices. Unmeasurable as yet is the full effect upon our world of this instantaneous network of communication. And then Claude Shannon came along and answered the question. I'm Claude Shannon, a mathematician here at the Bell Telephone Laboratory. So who's Claude Shannon? <laughs> Everybody knows who Claude Shannon was. Who the heck is Claude Shannon? <laughs> How should I respond to that? He's the father of uh, information theory. He's uh, the father of the digital age that envelops us. Claude Shannon is for information and communications like Einstein is for physics. All these concepts like bits and bytes and communication in general can be traced back to Shannon. Every one of us on every step of our daily existence, he started it all. Claude Shannon really gave us kind of an insight into how much information we can transmit over a certain communication channel. He understood what the boundaries of uh, communications are. It's not a regulatory body that sets your limits on the power you can transmit. It's physics itself. That popular perception, sort of happy-go-lucky, that there's always going to be a faster car, a better airplane, sometimes it runs out up against uh, really difficult or insurmountable realities of nature. The way he approached it, it was what, what mathematicians call purely existential. In other words, he said, there exists a way to do this. And, and somebody said, well, okay, well, what is it? Uh, I can't tell you what it is but I can prove to you that it exists. And this is what inspired generations of scientists. Whenever you open up an internet page on your cell phone, every single bit that you generate eventually goes through an optical fiber. The words that have always been used when talking about optical fibers is, is essentially limitless capacity, limitless capacity, limitless capacity. All of a sudden, things started to change a little bit. We could no longer make that progress that we had been uh, making before. People understood very well how to calculate Shannon limits on the wireless uh, channel. But on the optical channel, the physics is totally different. It became the question, not only what is the fundamental limit, but is there a way to break it down into one-dimensional systems? We had to pull together an interdisciplinary team because that was a question that was way too big to handle by a single person alone. So we got together a physicist on board, we got uh, an information theorist, a mathematician, and a communications engineer. With those four people, we were able to tackle that problem. When you have People from two different disciplines, like physics and math, which they have their overlaps, but basically they don't understand each other a lot of times. It took us probably two months, two months and a half before we could understand each other. It, it just looked hopeless. Eventually, uh, I had written a little piece of computer code, which I'm not very good at writing computer code, but I could see what was needed. And I gave it to Rene, and he tried it out, and he saw the two worlds come together. And that, that was like a eureka moment. At the end of the day, we came up with that uh, nonlinear Shannon limit. They were running around telling people, you know, it's being done, it's being done. So that was a very uh, uh, kind of exciting moment. Uh, you hear about this moment sometime in science, and actually that was one of them. We were very surprised that uh, we had actually hit that fundamental limit. Progress in increasing capacity was gonna to come to a screeching halt. We knew that this emergency needed to create uh, new technologies. Now we have to, to solve an even tougher problem than, than any of the problems prior to this. And so for a researcher, this is, uh, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. So Shannon, he, I, I, it's like he's alive today. I enjoyed working on this kind of a problem, as I have enjoyed working on many other problems, 
without any notion of being famous and so on. Uh, and I think, indeed, that most scientists are oriented that way, that they are working because they like the game. <laughs>